In this video, we're going to go over a topic that's going to make a huge difference in your portrait photography, posing. Most of the time, people absolutely hate having their picture taken. And why? Well, because they look terrible in the pictures being taken of them. And you'll hear that old adage, the camera adds 10 pounds. And the reason is because people pose poorly in front of the camera. The first step to getting better portraits is to check your subject out all the way from their head down to their toes. Now when I say check your subject out, I don't mean check your subject out, like, ooh girl, you look good. No, that's creepy. What I'm talking about is you're going to go and check off from head to toe that everything looks to be in its proper place. You don't want some of the hair in the forward portion of their shoulder and some of it back. You either want it all back, all forward. You don't want a piece of hair, oops, you know, right in the middle of their face. Half the time we get so excited about taking our shots of the people that we don't go ahead and take the time to properly make sure that everything is in its proper place. Making sure that there are no wrinkles in their sleeves or on the sides of their outfit there. Making sure that nothing is hung up in a strange spot. This will save you hours and hours in Photoshop afterwards and you will be so thankful that you did this. Most of the time, when people go to have their picture taken, they stand just like this. This is the worst way you can possibly stand in front of a camera. And here's why. When you're standing square, straight in front of the camera, you're going to look as wide as you possibly can like this, both visually this way and because our brains, when they see the edges of our body here, just like this, they're visually going to think, okay, that's the outside edge of our body, not here, which artificially makes you look much larger than you are. So the very first and simplest step you can do is have your subject turn 45 degrees. Right off the bat, I look skinnier across here. The next step is to have them make a nice natural break in their arm so that we get a separation from their body and their arm. This gives them a defined waist. So how do we accomplish this? What I usually do is if my subject is wearing pants, I will have them put their hand in their pocket like that, thumb out, or thumb in, hand out. Either way is fine. And this will create that nice natural break. If the subject is not wearing pants, then you won't have a pocket for them to be able to stick their hand into. So some women, if they're feeling sassy, will go ahead and put their hand on their hip just like that and make a nice space there. This is great, but most people aren't comfortable doing this. So instead, what you can have them do is go ahead and just have their hand on their thigh, place it there, and you'll still have that nice natural break that shows that space there and definition. From there, the next thing is to have their head in a better position. Instead of having their head be straight square onto the camera, that will make it look as wide as possible, you'll want them at a bit of a 45 degree angle but you'll still want them to maintain eye contact with the camera. Once you've done that, you have the option then of what way they're going to tilt their head. They can either do a classically feminine pose of tilting it a little bit forward, a neutral pose of straight up and down, or classically masculine pose of back. The thing you will also notice as you're focusing on someone's head there is that a lot of people have the tendency to think, okay, I've got to stand up straight in this picture, okay? But when they do that, what do they do? They bring their chin back like this. And what have I effectively done? I've given myself an unflattering double chin. Now, the last thing you want to say to your subject is, hi, you just gave yourself a double chin, because now that's going to make them feel totally and utterly self-conscious. And that is the last thing you want to do. So instead, you're just going to guide them nicely. And without saying it looks like you have a double chin, you'll just have them say, okay, all right, that looks great now. We're just going to bring, have you bring your chin forward and down. Sometimes this will confuse people or they'll try to do it in a really exaggerated way and they'll be going like forward and down. That's not what we're going for. We're going for a very nice, little simple way of engaging the neck muscles. This is a technique I've borrowed from my buddy Sue Bryce, she's a world-renowned portrait photographer, and it makes everyone look their best. Your subject may feel a little silly doing it at first, but just reassure them that it looks great. 
If they're having trouble understanding what you want them to do, first show them yourself from behind the camera. Just show them chin forward and down. If they're still not quite getting it, you can bring your hand up and again, standing behind the camera, just kind of guide them visually of going chin forward and down. I am not saying actually take your hand and go under their chin and go chin forward and down, but rather just showing them chin forward and down. And that will engage those neck muscles and get rid of all the appearance of a double chin. Another simple tweak that I will have my female subjects do is make sure that they have their weight on their back foot. So why would I have them do that? Well, the reason being is whatever object is closest to the camera is going to look largest. So if you have your weight on your front foot like this and you pop out that hip, this is going to look much larger then if you go ahead and shift your weight to your back foot like this, everything looks much smaller. And that gives you yet again another way of making your subject look slimmer in their image and making them much happier. So with all those steps combined, you will now have your subject getting the best portrait they have ever taken in their entire life. And they will be so thankful to you for taking it.